Hey, what's up everybody? So today we're going to talk about ways we can treat and sometimes reverse the symptoms of Alzheimer's and dementia. I know it's crazy, but it's true and it has proven results and it's not prescription medication. My dad had dementia. He was diagnosed in 2016, as some of you may know, and it's really devastating. He was a prolific sculptor and artist his whole entire life. And it's been my personal mission to really get as much information out there as possible about this awful disease and what families can do proactively to help mitigate some of the damage. So I am Risa Morimoto. I am your host. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach, and you're watching Modern Aging, where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to elevate our health and well-being as we age. If you're new to the channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. All you got to do is click on that little red button below with that little bell next to it to be sure to be notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. And you can check out our website where we have lots of new events and blogs and videos and podcasts. Um, just check that out at thisismodernaging.com. My guest today is Carrie Mills. She's an amazing dementia care specialist. She's been in the field for 20 years. I'm um, caring for patients and then also their families navigating through these extremely muddy waters as a dementia coach through her company, Engaging Alzheimer's. For the last couple of years, she's been studying a whole new protocol um, that was developed by Dr. J.L. Bresden. And now she's created this whole new company, Age Simply Well, on how families can proactively help their families, uh, their loved ones, with Alzheimer's or dementia and potentially reverse and really slow down the disease. So you've got to check it out. I mean, this is a super, super personal topic, as you know. We're going to talk about brain health and um, and all your new findings. And you have this whole new company now, and it's just so exciting. So tell me a little bit about how this company, this kind of, well, it used to be engaging Alzheimer's. So this is kind of the 2.0 version. Um, tell me yeah. a little bit about how you've ex expanded the vision. Uh, the focus had always been what can be done about Alzheimer's. That has always been, and any other related dementia, right? So it, we have always looked at behavior management by way of root causes. What can we fix? You know, we were we were never the group that was focused on, oh, yes, mom will repeat herself 100 times period. You know, it was, but that will probably make you insane. And so how can we, how can we get you out of the room when she's repeating herself? How can we redirect her? Right. We, we have always looked at this condition as to what can be managed, what strengths can we build on, you know, but it was always more from a behavior management standpoint, from a, a social standpoint, from a human interaction standpoint. And so based on the work of Dr. Joe Bredesen, which had been, which he started back, I read his first work in 2014, got trained in his work in 2017 and started practicing it then. The, the company has now really expanded, I, I would sort of say, in a clinical capacity. So now we're able to look at things from, you know, sort of more of a root cause. For instance, I would have always said sleep was important. But if somebody's not sleeping, my goodness, that's a problem. But now I can look at sleep and say, gee, if a person's not sleeping, I, now I'm, I have better understanding why their brain function isn't going to be as good. So it's not just about their quality of life improving. It's about how do we manage their brain in such a way so that they, you know, they get the rest they need. Or exercise was always important, but it was because I wanted people to get rid of energy. Because if you get rid of the energy, you're less likely in the afternoon to become really agitated because you have this pent up energy you don't know what to do with. Now I look at exercise and I'm like, oh my goodness, the benefits of, of exercise and what they can do for the brain from a treatment standpoint go far and far and above just helping somebody manage behavior for the afternoon, right? So really looking at what's causing these things, what's causing a person's brain to be functioning the way that it is and how do we optimize that is the work of Dr. Dale Bredesen, which... Um, We've included all of that so that there's sort of a prevention piece as well as the clinical intervention and that we still have the behavior management and the education piece. That's so, that's so amazing. So tell me a little bit about what people can do. Let's start from the beginning. So what can people do to prevent and optimize their brain health now? Um, if you have any recommendations, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of recommendations. <laughs> we have a few. Yeah, there's a few. <laughs> so, so I mean, so the, the new company name, as you alluded to, right, is Age Well Simply. It's this notion that if we live well and we age, then we will age well. 
and there's a way to simplify it. And this came about really from the fact that there is so much information out there that it's hard to weed through it. It's hard to understand it, right? Um, yeah. I, my, my traditional doctor is super. But if I went to her and said, you know, I think I have leaky gut, something that you can read about 8,000 times over on the internet, she might say, well, yeah, that's not something we have to worry about, right? So now I, I'm, I'm also caught between this traditional medicine world, all of this other kind of health information education, and I found for myself, it, it was really overwhelming, you know, and it was sort of like, how do you know the right thing to do? So part of, to answer that question of like, what can you be doing? I'm, I'm going to start by just saying there's sort of a sliding scale, right? So if you want to just do what's good for you, certainly a good diet is really important. A diet that's high in good fats, that's low in carbs, but has no processed foods where you eat regular food, where you eat, you know, the, the dirty dozen and clean 15 organic stick to that list. Um, low in sugar. Manager. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, low to no sugar for sure. Right. So that's kind of the diet period exercise, go with the general recommendation, 30 to 30 minutes to an hour every day, five days a week, include weight training and balance. Okay. Check, sleep, eight hours. No, six is not okay. No, nine is not optimal. <laughs> Seven to eight good quality sleep hours. Um, limit your alcohol. You know, all of these things that the people are used to hearing, right? All of them are going to make that list. Um, brain training. So different. So for people who are still working, they're still getting a lot of that, but certainly for people who've retired or for people who let's just take during this pandemic, right? Who aren't challenging their brains all the time, doing some sort of brain training. So brain HQ is the program that is most recommended by Dr. Bredesen because they've done the most research. So, um, Lumosity is another one that people have heard of. They're very similar but the research behind brain hq was just you know they started first and they they put a lot into that research component so so what is brain hq brain hq is a computer game that is broken down into 29 different games and of those 29 different games they're broken into six categories so there's attention there's processing speed memory iq navigation and I forget the other one. And so the idea, and, and so then you go through and you put in your, your age and your education level. And what it does then is as you play each day, say you play every day for 20 minutes, five days a week, it then ranks you according to people with your education and your age, which is competitive for competitive people like myself. That's extremely helpful <laughs> um, or very discouraging, depending on how I score. <laughs> um, but, but furthermore, the better thing that it does is that, so say I'm playing the game and I'm doing really well and I'm having a really good day and I'm on it. It's going to start, the game's going to go faster and it's going to get more challenging. Oh, cool. So say three days later, I'm just, man, I'm exhausted. I'm not functioning well. I'm really, you know, this is, I'm doing it because I have to, and I'm doing poorly. The game will actually slow down. So the game adjusts according to the player. But then the minute you start doing well, it starts to adjust and get harder for you again. So it's not meant to be a fun, relaxing game. It's meant to be like going to the gym with a personal trainer versus going to the gym and walking on the treadmill every day for half an hour at the same speed, right? It's meant to have that, that challenge component because what happens then is it creates neuroplasticity, which means that there's more neurons firing off to different neurons, which is strengthening your brain, basically. That is amazing. So, so, yeah, so that's something that people could get started doing. I mean, the Brain HQ subscription is all of, you know, $75 a year. It's not expensive and it's time well spent if you can make yourself do it. That's great. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've had a number of friends approach me, you know, I feel like mom's having some signs. You know, my aunt actually has now been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Everybody seems to know somebody, right? Um, and so what are kind of the first steps as a family or um, should they be doing in terms of intervention? Um, what can, I just feel like there's a lot of helplessness out there. Sure, sure. 
So the first thing is getting the word out that something can be done. I think even taking on that notion, um, it is still a true statement that when your cousins take your aunt to the neurologist, I, I can tell you exactly how it's going to go down, right? They're going to go in, they're, they're going to do some testing with her. She's going to feel a little bit awkward and uncomfortable because she's not going to be able to succeed because she doesn't have the, the cognitive wherewithal. And then they're going to go back and they're going to have the review and the doctor will, will speak to your cousins and say, you know, I'm sorry, she has dementia of this type, whether it's Alzheimer's, whether it's Lewy bodies, whether it's frontal temporal, or just dementia, whatever they're, they're going to end up sharing. And then they'll give her some Aricept and they'll say, you know, she should take this. And um, you guys should really just make sure, you know, finances are in order and know her living situation. And, you know, the, the doctor will, enc will encourage to get her affairs in order, so to speak, not because she's dying, but because it's always better to have that done sooner than later. And then he'll say, come back in six months. And in six months, when she comes back, if she comes back, many people don't even bother, she will be put on a second drug called Namenda. And a month after she, a month or two after she's on Namenda, they'll switch it over to Nemzeric, which is a combination of Namenda and Aricept. And then that will be the drug that she'll be on. And the whole goal will be to slow down the progression of her disease. With everybody knowing that that's the best case scenario, chances of it harming her are very low. She might get a stomach ache. She might have digestion problems. She might become a little bit more aware of her situation, in which case they would take her off of the Namenda because that's would that that can happen sometimes. And then that's that that's her whole treatment plan, right? So that's barring everybody who says there's nothing we can do, right? I mean that's the nicest scenario for the most part. And so what I want people to know is don't stop there. You know, if it was a cancer diagnosis and you went to one doctor and they gave you whatever their best case prognosis was and you didn't like it, you'd go down the street to another one, wouldn't you? Right. Because we all know that there there are so many aggressive treatments that can be done for cancer. There's trials that people can be part of. I mean, there's so much that can be that you can fight for. And with this disease, we've been told over and over and over that there is nothing. And so the first thing I want people to know, I want them to take on the mindset, there is something you can do. So in your own town, in your own neighborhood, in your own city, you need to start by looking to see who is trying to be aggressive about this, right? So that becomes part of the, the initial fight. Um, Dr. Bredesen's book called The End of Alzheimer's is a great place to start. So if you were to invest 22 bucks in buying Dr. Bredesen's book called The End of Alzheimer's, you will start to see that that there's a way to look at Alzheimer's from a clinical perspective when you take a step back and you're looking at it by way of blood work, by way of stool samples, by way of, of urine samples, right? There's a, his whole book, the, the whole premise of his work was to look to see what shouldn't have been in the brain of people with autopsies of Alzheimer's and how can we treat that in real life? So when there's mycotoxins from mold toxicity or the cells have no progesterone and estrogen because you know, a woman went through menopause 30 years ago. Well, the truth is the cells need hormones, right? They, they need them in order to function appropriately. Or mycotoxins can, you know, greatly damage the cells. So if you treat that stuff in real life, like before the person passes, ideally as soon as possible, then the brain doesn't end up having all of this damage and lack of nutrients that it needs in order to function properly. And you actually did a clinical trial and saw this so live and... I did. Yeah, so we didn't do a clinical trial. I worked with a clinic where this is what we did full time and we just treated people. Oh. So we had people with prevention, mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, undiagnosed. Some people had frontal temporal. Some people had Parkinson's like Lewy body. People were, the youngest person was 49, the oldest person was 85. So the, the whole gamut, right? Um, some people scored nearly perfect or did score perfect if they were doing it for prevention on a test like the MOCA. Other people scored zero and we couldn't even get them to complete it. I mean, it, it was it was a, little, a mixed bag of all different types of people to be able to apply this protocol to. Yeah, so I moved moved out to Seattle to work with um, the Brain Health and Research Institute for a year and a half to see how does this work 
in real life with real patients who are implementing these changes every day into their lives and what those changes look like. And so what did you find? The, the suggested time is give it a year, which is a really easy thing for me to say, right? But I also say it because this disease is not easy any day of the week. And when, when you think about what things will look like a year from now, all we know is that things will be wor worse. I mean, that's all that this disease does, unfortunately. It's a progressive condition. And so in my book, giving it a shot for a year is well worth the time, the money, the effort, because you have a chance at something that you otherwise, a year won't be the same, no matter how you look at it, right? So with that said, I did a little study at about eight, month eight, and of the 24 people that I was working with on a regular basis, so either weekly or biweekly, 75% um, uh, of them remained the same with an inclination toward having some improvement or actually improved. So like one woman, she had mild cognitive impairment. She had a mold problem in her home as well as some hormones and you know, just optimizing her nutrients and vitamins, changed her diet. She did okay with exercise. She would argue that wasn't her best thing. She hit a couple bouts of depression because of some family issues and that kind of threw her off track. She went back to her regular neurologist and her regular neurologist, having nothing to do with us, right? Her regular neurologist at UCLA said to her, you actually don't meet the criteria for myocognitive impairment anymore. And wow. if you just keep up doing what you're doing, you will go on to live a, a long life with no dementia in your future. I mean, the neurologist said that. not me, not, not the doctors I worked with, not my team. That was what she was told. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she's not alone. I mean, some people, it's less common, but some people actually lost their diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So the doctors were now telling them, you meet the criteria for myocognitive impairment because you no longer meet the criteria for Alzheimer's disease. So this is so much in line with just my belief about trying to create better balance in the body, right? And we're just, we're all too stressed out. We're eating the wrong things. We're, you know, we're sitting down looking at Zoom all day long. It's like we're just doing all the wrong things that are just damaging yeah. to our bodies and our minds. And I think, right. I feel like, we don't realize that there's such a, you know, there's such an interconnectedness. Totally. Totally. Of everything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so in terms of your protocol, so then you're deal so you're working on diet, exercise, sleep, mm -hmm. stress management. Yep. Yep. Which is a huge one. Cognitive training. And so those are the five main ones. And then, um, so then, so like what we're doing here is we're working with, Dr. Bredesen's company, um, it's called Apollo Health. So people go there, they sign up, they become a member and then they get their blood work done. Then they get a report and we, they come back and we look at the report with them to say, okay, let's see where you're at, right? And here's what's optimal, here's what's not and how to fix those things. And then we, we have strategic partners that we work with if there's outliers. So if it's a mold issue, if it's a Lyme issue and they need a specific doctor who can help them through that component, so that, then we'll refer them to that person and have them stay involved so that we can still quarterback it all. But then we work with them on a weekly basis to help them implement all of these changes into their life for a year. And so what, so you, are you doing it through supplements? Are you giving, telling them what to eat? Are you? Yeah, all of it. So we look at diet together and it's less about us telling people what to do and more about us helping people to understand why they should be doing what the, what the proper recommendations are, right? So for instance, um, a ketogenic diet is actually very helpful for the brain. The brain fuels better from a fat source than a glucose source. And so people immediately say, oh, keto, I can do keto. And it's like, pause. I wasn't talking about cheeseburgers <laughs> loaded with bacon, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> you know, so helping people understand, like just, just wait one second, <laughs> you know, you know, why are healthy fats important? What are the right healthy fats versus the wrong healthy fat? Um, what's the right range of keto to be? And how does fasting play a part in that? How does exercise play a part in that? Right. So that as people have understanding how all of this comes together, then they are able to better um, be consistent and they're, they're, the changes they make are more sustainable. Right. Which totally makes sense. 
Yeah, because right knowledge is power. So when people understand why they have to do something, it doesn't mean people are perfect and it doesn't mean that they do it all the time, for sure. Right. This protocol, though, what I learned is you don't have to be 100%. Strive for it. But if you can hit 80 or 90% most days, but the truth, like if you know, if, if over the course of a week you can be 80 to 90% compliant, you will, you, you will, I saw changes. How about that? Wow. I can't promise that for everybody, but I can tell you that I saw it when I saw people be that compliant. Well, 75% is, is good. That's really yeah. good for 100% of those people telling them they're all going to get worse. Right. 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 Oh, oh. So. Rita, I have seen thousands of people die from this condition. Ugh. I mean, I've been doing it 20 years, right? That that's the only that was only ever the end game of all of this. My my role was always just to help people live well so that the person who had the disease could live well and then that their family could as well. Let's reduce stress. Let's reduce depression. You know, you're going to live with this disease for 10 years. Let's do our best to make it a decent 10 years. Right. I mean, and there's so many great things that you can do that are totally worth your time. But that's why I see this and I'm like a year to potentially yeah. wow. save that. That's and and that's, that's barring the cost that goes along with, you know, having this di diagnosis from home care to assisted living to nursing home costs to, I mean, you know it, the, the costs are out of control, yeah. you know? So, so if you were to invest $25,000 in your health, if you're already in it to say, I don't want to keep having, I don't want this. And I want to walk myself back. Right. To me, that's money well spent because you're going to spend that in three months with home care at home. Yeah, no, no, no joke. My God. That's amazing. You know? So what would you say, you know, there's of course all different stages of this disease of Alzheimer's. Sure. Um, is there at a certain point where there's just kind of no turning back and you're just too far gone? Or do you feel like you, you can be helped at any stage? So it's a, it's such a legit, it's like a, the perfect ethical question. I feel yeah. like, you know, because it's a lot of work it's, uh, to implement all of this. And so that's where I really go back to the families and I'm like, so let's just talk about what your goals are, mm. right? For some people just having mom still with them and have her happy they want it that that's worth it to them right to other people they really want to have a very independently functioning person we might not achieve that right the other thing about the protocol that i think does bear merit period is that a lot of the aspects of this protocol physically make people feel better like a lot of the clients would say, I've never felt this good my whole life. So when you think about the behaviors that you often see with, you know, your traditional string of, of diseases that cause dementia, well, if all of a sudden now people are going to the bathroom every day, if they're hydrated, if they're exercising, if they're sleeping, you're going to manage so many of those behaviors because you're not dealing with lack of sleep, stomach problems, constipation, you know, muscle tone and weakness and fatigue. So the protocol helps in this other kind of way from a behavior management standpoint. And maybe it's not as intense and it's not as proactive, but it's still it's still worth the merit, in my opinion, to find out what you could be doing that might just be making things better so that the person lives better each day. And then, I mean, I, I got an email from somebody that I had worked with. So I've known her probably about a year and a half, two years, this beautiful family. They're like an amazing family, one of them. And the mom, I would say she's fairly advanced. If she took a, a MOCA, which is the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Screening, out of 30 points, she might score three, four, five, right? So she's fairly advanced. They've been at this for a number of years. And the daughter and I had a conversation because she was just really missing her mom. They're young. The mom is 68. She was diagnosed when she was around 64. So she's got grandkids and kids, you know, her children are in their 30s and 40s getting married, having kids. And they're like, we just want her happy. We just want to be near her, you know. And so just this morning, the daughter wrote me this email saying how her dad went away and she and her husband and her son spent the weekend with her mom. And she said that it happened a couple of months ago, but she said she and I had talked about just enjoying the present with your mom, 
you know, like don't go constantly looking for where is she? Where is she? Is she in there? Just exist with her, you know, and she was saying how her mom was always a great listener. And, and at one point prior to this, her mom had had this moment where she just started crying and wish, said, I wish it wasn't like this. And the daughter was like, Mom, so do I. And it was like this real bonding moment. Right. So I said to her, you know, that was your mom being really present with you. You didn't even, maybe didn't even realize it, right? So fast forward, she has this weekend with her mom and her husband and her son. She said it was the most she's seen her mom, seen her mom in years, you know? And she was like, and, and I know part of it was perspective. She was willing to look at it differently. But at the same time, her mom is extremely stable in mood, which she hadn't been. She's, her cognition has been stable for six months. This is a woman who's still independent with her ADL, so she can still go to the bathroom and shower and do all of those things, right? So those are those are the difference often between somebody staying home and somebody not being home, right? That's huge. That's awesome. It's huge. Yeah. So so to your point, I think just because somebody's later, I don't know. You know, we don't know how the body is going to respond to the changes that taking the right supplements and making these lifestyle changes will have on a person that um, it's up to a family how much they really want to invest in order to try to have a different outcome. That's It's just so amazing. And I think it's so true that each case is so different. Each family is so different. The dynamics are so different, right? Um, the degree of the disease. So, so tell me a little bit about Age Well Simply. It's Age Well Simply, yes? That's right, yeah. Okay. Um, and how you plan to work with families. So we, so we've already started, which is very fun. Um, so age well simply is this notion. Again, if we live well, we make the changes every day, the, the right decisions, we slowly introduce them into our life. We age better. And as we age better, right, that's our, that would be our goal, right? Tomorrow I want to wake up better than I did today, if possible, but I don't want it to consume my life. I want to do this in a, in a simple strategic, non-overwhelming fashion. And so w within Age Well Simply, we basically have four things that we're doing. We're doing prevention, which is again, looking at, looking at your science, your science, meaning you personally, your genetics, your vitamins, nutrients, your hormones, right? Where are you at? And what are the things that could potentially cause you to have problems in the future with your brain? And how do we address them now? So, right. So that's intervention. Then we have prevention. That's prevention. Oh, that's prevention. I'm sorry. Yep. That's prevention. Like, <laughs> then we <what>? have <laughs> yeah. Did I not? Did I? Did I? Then there's intervention, which is really about tackling it with all you have. I mean, Dr. Bredesen says, you know, this is like dancing with the devil. You know, I mean, it's there's no uh, there's nothing else out there that will show success the way this protocol has. So that's what intervention is about. So the prevention program, there's a head start as well as a, a prevention that's a bit more um, blood work oriented. The head start is more just looking at like metabolic factors and how we can address them and really just addressing exercise and diet. And then prevention, then intervention. Then there's regular dementia coaching. So that's the, the person who says, I would love to do all of those things but I can't do it today. <laughs> you know, I don't have, I, I'm struggling just in being patient with him. You know, I'm, she's, she's repeating herself. He's trying to get out the door. You know, my family and I can't figure out if assisted living is right or if we should keep him home, right? All, everything that fits under dementia coaching, we still do that, I mean, in, in its entirety. And then the last component is education. So webinars, books, presentations, um, you name it, anything that helps people to just understand anywhere where we can be that will help people to understand that there is something that you can do about this disease falls into the education department. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So if people want to reach out to you, how do they do that then? They can go to the website, which is agewellsimply.com. Shoot us an email. Let us, you know, let us know what your situation is. We'll help you to understand what it is that we can do, understand what's involved. I mean, I, I think of that, um, that story in, in the book of Luke all the time where uh, Jesus is giving a parable and he says, you know, um, you want to be the one who, who you don't want to be like the guy who starts to build a house. 
and then doesn't have what he needs to finish it. And everybody walks by and says, you know, he should have counted the cost beforehand. You know, this is that category, right? I mean, we want you to know what's involved because we want you to be geared up and ready for it. We don't want you to be surprised by it. Hope is hope is real and hope is very much out there, but it's not just take a pill and you're going to get better.